Hi, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be covering some Go tools for database schema migrations. Let's get this thing started. Because this is going to be sort of like a video hands-on with some demos. Um, we will be requiring a few tools obviously installed. One of them will be Docker for running the database because we're going to be talking about the schema migrations for databases. Uh, Go 1.15 a little bit of understanding of, of Go modules really should be pretty straightforward. All the code is available on GitHub or in my repo, and the link is in the description as well. So, what are database schema migrations? So, these two quotes I take in from Wikipedia. Um, the idea is that database schema migrations refers to the management of incremental, reversible changes and version control to relational database schemas. A schema migration is performed on a database whenever it is necessary to update or revert the database's schema to some newer or older version. The whole point of database's schemas is to have some sort of a history of the changes that we're applying to those databases. So if we are creating a new table, we need a new migration. If we are creating uh, adding a new column or removing a column or obtaining the type of one of the columns of databases um, or maybe adding a new, a new, an actual database schema depending on the database engine that you're using all of that should be stored in a version control system so the other team members can refer to obviously a review and at the same time you can keep a track and history of the changes that you have been making to the, to the database what is database refactoring and again this is a second quote that i have here on the slide is a simple change to a database schema that improves its design while retaining both its behavioral and informational semantics so database is re database refactoring is obviously related to the, uh, the schema migrations because when you are refactoring databases you need migrations as well to apply those changes the idea of having um, or making database uh, or refactoring databases is in cases where perhaps you need to split a table or maybe to, you need to join a table or maybe you need to um, define some sort of different um, maybe implement a view or those kind of things now um, there are two awesome books that I really recommend and the funny thing about these two books and there are a lot of them but these are the ones that I highly recommend anyone to for, for, for reading and understand databases is that if we go back to 2006 Refactoring databases is includes a bunch of different um, patterns for refactoring databases according to some problems that you may have and you may be experiencing, or some some problems that you want to avoid if your database um, increases the data and whatnot. Now, on the other side, we have Monolith to Microservices that is uh, it was published last year, uh, and it's been between the two of them 16 years, and. The, the, the cool thing about this is uh, all of that that is in, in that original book, Refactoring Databases, it still applies to something really modern like microservices. So I highly encourage you to take a look at that, uh, read these two books because these are phenomenal and you won't be disappointed. Now the cool thing about this is that both of them are available on the O'Reilly Learning uh, System. If, I don't know you, you use that, I'm, I'm a huge fan and I will make a video about that specifically. I already have a blog post on, on my or my on my website discussing whether it is, is worth it or not. And this is kind of besides the point of, of this specific video, but I just want to bring that up. Now, what are some popular tools in Go specifically that allow you define, maintain, run, and, and interact with database migrations? Um, I'm listing five of them. There are more, and these two, the, well, these five in particular, and, and in general, all of them follow two different flavors. Uh, one of them is based on uh, using DSL, which is literally sort of like a pseudo, uh, not SQL statements, but ra rather some sort of like more, even more humanized in, in statements that happen to be applicable uh, to any database engine, with the idea that perhaps uh, you maybe want to migrate to, ad to actually migrate your data to a different database engine in the future. That's a different conversation, but some of them do that. Most of the Go migration tools, database migration tools, happen to be using explicit SQL. 
Now, you don't really need to have a migration tool for doing any of this. You can build your own. I mean, literally, the way the migrations work is that they define a way to migrate up and down for one specific change. Let's say you are creating a new data, a new table. Uh, migrating up means you are creating a new table. Migrating down means that you are uh, uh, dropping that table that you created in the previous step. Uh, you need to have a way to to have that uh, those versions you know stored somewhere and perhaps you need to have a way to create those files that happen to include the SQL statements that you're planning to run and that's why I'm mentioning building your own because that is possible you may or may not want to do that depending on, on the situation that you that you're experiencing now the one that I actually recommend is the one by uh, called migrate under the project golang uh, dash migrate that is the one that i personally recommend there is uh there are a bunch of, of of more like i was saying and i specifically mentioned this one because it does have support for most of the different data inputs that you that we usually use the most common would be like a file system but maybe your migrations happen to be in s3 for example or maybe some sort of azure volume somewhere or maybe they are coming from a different um, data input that you that is some obscure kind of way and also at the same time it allows you to exp to to choose different database engines most of the ones that i have here on this list are applicable or exclusive to postgres uh, maybe if you happen to be using mysql or sql server or one of those uh, or oracle or whatever the case may be perhaps you, you you can you can also use migrate as well now like i was saying a while ago the, the dsl based migrations happen to or tools that happen to be, be using dsl happen to have uh, more humanized um, instructions now pop which is part of the buffalo project go buffalo project happens to be using this uh, um this template like um package that allows you to define uh, the migrations using this kind of instructions it's not actual sql those, those are not sql statements and these are more um real similar to what um active record in in ruby and rails um that library that gm does so Again, it depends on, on, on how much time you want to invest or, or, or if you're willing to use SQL or not. But most of the tools that we are going to be using and that are exist currently are using uh, explicit SQL. So let's jump into the demo and I will show you what I was trying to, to sh um, explain you a while ago. All of these uh, instructions, not instructions, all of this code is, like I was saying, in the repository on GitHub now. Because, because I'm saying that this is going to be a database um, demo and we're going to be using Docker, uh, there is this instruction that you need to be running for instance, for running a container that happens to be using Docker, um, that happens to be using Postgres. And this specific example is actually using Postgres as a database engine, Postgres 12. Now, in in the code that is already available i have two migrations already implemented now the idea is that if you remember the project i started in the previous video is some sort of like a bookstore system and this bookstore happens to have books that have are associated to, to authors so the book has a foreign key for authors and let me show you how it looks like um, if you look at the first migration and it is creating a, a table called authors with some sort of uid author name and created that and whatnot now the second migration is the one for books and now the books happen to be uh, defining the foreign key which is for the authors all right now like i, I was uh, mentioning when i was describing the tools is that the idea of defining migrations is that all of these migrations have steps one for going up one for going down for going up defines the new the new changes that we're going to be applying to the database schema and when you go down it, it refers to reverting that migration so that's why we have two different <coughs> excuse me two different migrations that happen to have the same name but one of them ends up 
with the postfix up sql and the other one has the down sql now the up is creating the table and the other one is doing the opposite instructions in the reverse order dropping the table dropping the extension and that's pretty much what it is now if we run these migrations with the instruction that i have right here which i'm going to be copying what it does is that it's using the migrate tool that you will need to install using this go install command instruction and one important bit about the migrate tool that i'm, I'm discussing right now is that because it supports way too many data inputs and database engines you need to be explicit with some of the things that you want to build otherwise your repository um, and your project will have uh, dependencies that you need you didn't, don't even need so you have to be careful when doing that now if we run to migrate what is going to happen is going to be creating those two migrations all right now the, if we open this database tool called table plus which i'm a huge fan which i'm trying to drag to this window um it allows you to see oh i cannot open it okay I'll, I'll make it into let's drag it right here let's put it right here there you go so this database plus what it's doing is um this is allowed it's just um a gui for postgres you can actually use psql if you want to use the command line but just for the sake of having something much more uh visual uh, this is what i was uh, trying to show you a while ago that it took me a little bit but anyways uh, we have the 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 schema of the database and the migrations already applied and the cool thing is that there is this table called schema migration that migration the tool the go tool is in charge of, of updating and it uses it as a way to track what is the migration that was applied the last so in this case is this one ending in 13 which if we go back to this one you will notice that it's the last one being applied all right okay so let's go back a little bit to what are we going to be doing when trying to create a new migration let's say that we're planning to create a new migration and in this case we are going to be adding a new column to the box table and in this case we're going to be calling it pages all right we this is the command that the tool at the moment supports and the cool thing about this tool is it's not actually only the cli it does have a package and you can build your own tools using that api in case if you for whatever reason the data input the data input that they, they they don't have the data input that you happen to be using for for example or maybe you're pulling your credentials from environment variables or maybe you're pulling your credentials from some sort of uh, like a vault like hashicorp vault or maybe um, aws uh, system store those kind of things that are, are not available or they are more difficult to do unless you start doing uh, scripts in bash or some sort of like a um, terminal based language so you have the option to use the API to actually build your own CLIs with as complex as you want. So that's one of the things that I also like as well. So <coughs> in this case, we look at the new migration. We can also go and edit it. And let's say alter table books at column and we can call it pages int and then not no default zero and then instead of int we can use a small int because obviously there are not that many pages and then if we open up the down we can just do the opposite drop column pages and with that we already implemented a new migration that happens to be available for our specific new database engine now if we execute the same command going up we will see that the change applied to what we're trying to do if we refresh you will notice that it changed to 29 books already has a pages that we just added and then that's pretty much how migrations work now if you want to go down which is perhaps you made a mistake and then you need to or when deploying it or maybe when you're doing this making ch these changes locally you, you, you forgot to do something maybe you can go down 
one which means you're going one step and what it does is that it act it, it what is you're expecting it removes that migration it updates the migrations the schema migrations table as well to go back what you previously had which is really really cool now with all of that being said what are the best practices and guidelines for this so the guidelines and best practice depend on the things that you're trying to achieve um, I'm listing four of them because those are the things that I personally have faced and the problems we have solved in the past now <clears throat> when we use the create command in the migrate tool it defines a file with a specific um, timestamp based file convention that is something that your team you or, or whoever is working with you they need to come with a convention to follow usually the defaults work and that's fine now the second one is something that you may have problems um, or maybe you have your own opinions about it you may be thinking well it's better idea if you use the dsl because most, most likely maybe i have the opportunity to migrate from i don't know postgres to my sql or my sql to i don't know some other database engine or whatever the case may be but in reality that doesn't happen that often it may happen i don't know ever never once and and really unless you're doing something really specific to the database um in the, the database engine do, to sql or some or some sort of really specific sql extension it's most likely migrating from one database to another is not going to even be applicable so using dsl in the first place is not even a good idea so what i'm we are where all my projects are using sql statements nowadays so that's easier to maintain maintain in the end now we're talking about the actual migrations um, when should you deploy that set migration you should do it during the deployment pay, pay, during your deploy deployment pipeline whatever that 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 is or whenever that happens um, the idea with the database migrations is just not another thing to have on the side but it has to be part of your development process your workflow and your pipeline when building your artifacts that in the end are you going to be deploying to production or whatever <coughs> um, so if you happen to have a migration and then when you deploy code you do it you know using a CI you know using CI CD and then you deploy to I don't know AWS and then you connect to the to the instances manually to run the migrations that sort of kind of defeats the purpose of having this tool in particular sure you can do that but ideally when you're deploying your code that happens to be using the new changes for your database schema you're including those changes as well as part of the same change so you can in case the database, database schema fails you can revert that change and also the code that comes with it they get reverted and go back to the previous version and that's the last point i want to make here now how do you do that that actually depends on how your deployment process is um, and and it depends how you are replacing your all instances with your new instances or your new um, services with your old services the new version with the with the or present the old versions with the new version so it depends if you're using something like blue and green or um, canary um, canary or, or those kind of things so it depends on, on how the process is usually the the way i recommend doing things that you deploy the thing and then uh, you deploy the migration you run the migration and then after that succeeds you apply your dates your server changes or your new code or your new artifact and everything goes together at the same time so that's it everybody thank you thank you for listening thank you for watching those are a few tools used for database schema migrations in go again the link to the final blog post for this video will be in the description as well so you know keep it up and thank you for watching see you